In this demo, I will show you how to integrate OneLogin with Jenkins to have an identity provider external to Jenkins that will manage all the users for you. First, what you need to do is you need to create a trial account. You can create a free trial account for OneLogin to then integrate it with Jenkins. I've already created a trial account. You just have to enter some basic information. You don't need to give any credit card and then you can immediately start using OneLogin and you can connect it to three company apps. Jenkins is one of those. I've already created an account. Once logged in, you get this page. So first you set up a password, then you claim your subdomain. I picked newtechacademy.onelogin.com and then you have one user. You can add more users, but one user should be enough for the demo. And then you can add apps. So I click on apps. Currently, I don't have any apps, so I'm going to add a new application. And I'm going to add a SAML test connector. So SAML test connector, because I'm going to use SAML to connect to Jenkins. I'm going to call this Jenkins. You can upload a Jenkins logo if you want. Then you can press save. And then you need to first give the parameters or the configuration parameters for the application. First, you need to put your domain name. My domain name is just the IP address, port 8080. If you have linked your IP address with a real domain name, then this is going to be your real domain name. For me, it's HTTP. It's possible that for you, it's HTTPS if you configure it SSL. If I would change this port to 80, then I wouldn't have to put this port, but my port is on 8080, so I have to put this one. The second part of this URL needs to be needs to be this, and this goes into the audience, not in the real estate. So in audience, we put our full URL, and then security realm, finish login. In the recipient, we have the same URL, and then we have a URL validator, and this is required because OneLogin is going to validate the URL, and it needs to be a regular expression. So this means start with, and then we use HTTP, and then we have to escape our slashes, put the URL, and then another escaped slash. And then this means all the URLs that start with this are accepted. So you can still have something after it, but not anything before it, because this is the start and there's no end marker here. So this will be validated by one login. And then for the ACS consumer URL, we again put this one. So we have three times the same URL. And then as a validator URL, we just have this string. We also should escape the dots in between this one because dots have a special meaning in regular expressions. Going to save this. Always make sure that you save it because this is not automatically saved. And we're going to download the SAML metadata because that's what we need for Jenkins. So this is an XML file and you can open this with a text editor. I just opened this with text edit. So this is how it looks like. It has a certificate and the URL of one login in it. So I'm going to copy paste this in Jenkins. So here in Jenkins, I will go to manage Jenkins. Configure global security. And then if you would go for LDAP, the directory server, if you have LDAP or Active Directory, you will use this one. And I'm going to use a SAML. To get a SAML option right here, I first have to install the SAML plugin. So we'll do that first. SAML plugin. Restart Jenkins. Go to Manage Jenkins. Configure Global Security. And then I have a SAML option. I'll put the metadata right here. So this is the metadata. And that should be it. I can now save this. And then I'm going to... You can either 
log out from here or go to an incognito window to test it. So let me try that again so that you can follow. So what I did is I went to this URL, my Jenkins URL, then I press enter and then it redirects me to one login to the new tech academy one login.com. And once I log in, what's going to happen is it will do a post request to Jenkins and it will tell me, okay, this user can log in. Jenkins will communicate with one login using the information that I pasted in the metadata. So they have a communication channel between them to validate myself through one login and one login will then be the identity provider. One login will be the place where my credentials are stored, not anymore in Jenkins, which is very useful because you can use one login as a identity provider for all your apps, not just for Jenkins. So then you have one login for Jenkins, but also for your other systems. I haven't logged in yet. Let me just log in to see if it is actually working. Login, password, login is my email address. Click login and then I am logged in to Jenkins. So that is how the one login integration works. The one login integration is, is great if you're a small company and you don't have any identity management provider yet. Most companies though, the bigger enterprises, they use LDAP. One login also provides LDAP, but it's a more expensive plan, so you better use SAML. LDAP is the most common one. SAML is a really good one if you want to integrate it with an identity provider like OneLogin. The Jenkins user database is really good if you have just a few users. And Unix user group database is if you want to use the local database, the local users, which is the Unix groups and Unix users, which can be done through PAM, pluggable authentication modules, which is another mechanism that you can then plug in again to other systems. So Unix users groups is also sometimes useful. I would recommend LDAP or SAML and for really small installations, just a, a normal user database. That's it for this lecture. I hope this one was useful to enhance your authentication system on Jenkins.